Christ Community Church, located at 25th and Thomas Avenue in Portsmouth, Ohio. First of all, our new devotionals came in for the month of December, January, and February. They're on the table on your right as you're exiting the building. If we run out of them today, there's more that will stick out there. Uh, if you, there's, there's folks who have businesses who take them and set them out for customers. You're invited to take as many as you like. And this is one of our ways of just getting the word out about Christ. Simple five-minute daily devotionals that can create an, uh, a good habit within your family, within your own personal life. So they're back in the back. Um, let's talk Thanksgiving dinner just for a second. Next week, this, there's going to be this great transformation. All these chairs will come down next Sunday morning and a bunch of tables will go up, 70 tables. As a matter of fact, we, we have 700 folks who have purchased all the tickets that we have available. We have never sold out of this Thanksgiving dinner so quick. Um, so that, that's what's happened. So if you are holding a ticket like I am, you're holding gold, okay? Um, actually, we have had a number of people ask if, they, if there are extra tickets. So if you bought extra and, and we're planning on inviting folks and you know you're not going to be using those, I'm going to ask you, uh, if you would, to just call the church office or turn those back in to us simply that, so that we can get those to other people because there's a line of folks who would like to, like to have tickets, okay? So, now for those of you who are decorating, um, Cindy wants to, and, and I both want to thank you so much for volunteering to decorate each of the tables. Next week, the tables will be up by around 1230, and you can start decorating the tables between 1230 and 5 that afternoon, but they have to be done by 5 o'clock, okay? Uh, so, if you want to know what those decorations should look like, they're out in the atrium against the back wall, a couple of tables that Cindy decorated, just so that you could get an idea of what they look like. But, but uh, Cindy wants to thank the ladies and the men. There were some men who volunteered to help uh, decorate some tables, and, and it's greatly, greatly appreciated. If you ordered tickets and we've been holding the tickets... You can get those today right after the service. See, Cindy, she'll take, she'll take care of you, and she'll be packing around a little box with those tickets in them. If you mug her, that's a bad deal, okay? I mean, th those tickets are valuable in there, so you can't knock her over and try to steal all those tickets, okay? You got that. That's a bad deal. Um, also, this weekend, there's, there's Angel Tree, and, and Angel Tree is our way of reaching out to families who have a, a parent, an adult that's incarcerated. And what we do is we purchase Christmas gifts for the children. And when we present the, the gifts to the children, we present them in the name of the parent that's incarcerated. Now, the person that's in prison is being presented with the gospel and their understanding that the reason Christ community is doing this is because of our love for Jesus and we want that prisoner to understand and get to know the love of Jesus Christ. And at the same time, we, the, the gospel will be going out to the family, to the children that receive it. And so we, we will invite you to get involved in the way you do that. As you're exiting down the ramp, turn to the left. There's the angel tree table. You stop by, you pick up an angel or two, and you'll receive all the instructions there about what to do, okay? Uh, we have quite a number of children that we're taking care of this year, so we invite you to get on board with us with the angel tree program. Um, <clears throat> we made a mistake here at the, the church this week. One of the mistakes we made is November the 30th, it's a Wednesday evening, and we're actually going to be decorating for Christmas. It doesn't take long. We just need about 30 volunteers who will sign up and, and come and help decorate the church building. doesn't take us long, a couple hours, and it gets us ready for the Christmas season. But, you know, people that are my age and older, we understand this phrase where you call Christmas decorating the hanging of the greens. But you know, if your last name's Green... This doesn't sound like a real attractive thing. And so some of you guys that are walking in, you see this table sitting there going, the hanging of the greens, and you're going, wow, is Christ Community hosting an execution? What, what's going on? 
Well, well, that's not what we're doing. We're decorating for Christmas. That's what it means. And so we would love to have you come and help us decorate. To do that, stop by that table that says the hanging of the greens and, um, and, and sign your name up so that we know we have 30 people that we can count on decorating the tree out in the atrium, getting the two trees up on the stage and, and the poinsettias and all that stuff, getting all of that laid out. So we can use your help there as well. And the last thing I have for you before we dig in uh, is, is simply this. We, we have been asked by a gentleman who attends church here, he and his wife, uh, Andrew and Brittany Klein. Andrew uh, oversees the CrossFit at the Life Center. And, and he is... He, he has wanted to do this for some time. He wants to be able to make a contribution to the homeless shelter with canned goods, uh, non-perishable items that, that can be used for their Thanksgiving down there. And so what he's asked, he asked me, Rick, do you think Christ Community would mind gathering up a bunch of canned goods and, and helping out? And I said, no, we wouldn't mind. It's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. So what we've done is we have a grocery cart out in the atrium and if you'll throughout this week or by next weekend bring the canned food or non-perishable items here then just set them in that grocery cart or around the grocery cart we'll make sure they get to the homeless shelter just a great opportunity to just do a nice uh, random act of kindness that that would be a good thing all right everybody with me on that say yes oh thank you god they're still here um you might rather <clears throat> that I talk about announcements all day rather than discuss what I'm going to discuss this morning. Because anytime you start talking about money, anytime you start talking about you, the stuff that you have, it gets a little uncomfortable. And this isn't one of those rip roaring sermons, this isn't one of those times where I'm going to hear an amen. Um, so can you say amen? amen? Thank you. So I got one. Uh, but anyway, what, what we are doing is a series. It's a four-week series that Scott introduced last week entitled Thanksgiving. And the reason we're doing it is because one of the things we haven't done well here at the church when it comes to teaching is teaching about what God expects of us with the things that he's provided for us. And so that's, that's the four-week series. Last week, Scott basically introduced where this whole idea of tithe came from. And, and just a quick review, it's very simple. The tithe that we first come across in the Old Testament that's talked about in the New Testament was where the person who had goods and provision recognized that they were in the presence of someone greater than themselves. And so as a response to the greatness of the person, a tenth of the possessions, a tenth of all that Abraham had, he gave to the high priest Melchizedek because he recognized he was in the presence of someone greater than himself. Everybody good with that? That's where Scott took us last week. <clears throat> this week, I'm going to be talking about using the tithe to test God. As a matter of fact, what I'll be talking about, there's only one time in Scripture where God says it's okay for you to test Him. Actually, there's only one time in Scripture where He encourages you to test Him. Just once. And that's what I'm going to be dealing with. So if you take your bulletins and you look up the sermon notes, we're going we're gonna to jump on those here in just a second. But before we do, I'm going to read this passage of Scripture out of Malachi chapter 3, just seven verses, verses 6 to 12. And here we go. I, the Lord, do not change. So you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed because he doesn't change. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, well, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offerings. You're under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. 
Test me in this. You should highlight that if you have your Bibles with you. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. And see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. Now, here's the principle. The principle of the scripture when it comes to your possessions, your finances, anything that you have is simply this. Everything we have belongs to God. Everything we have belongs to God. It's in Psalm 24, 1 that, that the psalmist writes, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. That means that not only does this earth belong to the Lord, but everything in it, which means you belong to the Lord, and which means all possessions belong to the Lord. They're all His. Why? Because He's God. He created it all. And you might object real quick and say, okay, wait one second. I understand what you're saying. He's the creator and stuff, but everything's not his. I worked hard for what I have. I mean, look at the calluses on my hand. Check my, uh, check my, college, uh, my college loans out and see the, see the work that I've put in for my diplomas. And then I would just simply respond by asking you this question. Who gave you that ability? That came from him. Because God has given you a mind and an ability to do what you do and to provide for your family and all of that stuff, and He's given me that as well, because He has given that to you, it's His. Because He didn't have to give that to you. Your abilities, your gifts, those are grace gifts from God. And so... Everything, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Everything we have belongs to God. And so when, when we look at it that way and we look at our provisions, we look at all the blessings that we have, whether it be, the, whether it be whether, whether it's the blessing of stuff or, or the blessing of finances, whatever we have, those those things, 100% of what we have comes from Him. Now, here's, here's what God does. This is where the tithe comes in. He says to His people, He says to Israel, and then over in the New Testament, this whole concept is carried over into the New Testament. He says to Israel this, basically. The 90% of what you have is yours to manage. I've made you managers of what I have blessed you with. All right? Everybody with me? I've made you a manager of 90% of what I've blessed you with. But 10% of it, a tenth, or the word tithe, which means tenth, is mine, according to the Lord. Not mine, Rick Clark's, is, is God's. So 90% is ours to manage, but, but 10% isn't ours to manage. 10% belongs to Him. It's His. And that may be a strange concept. It may seem like, okay, well, who came up with this idea? Are, are, we, just, are we tipping God, or is that what we do? Are we, are, or do we use it to vote for God, or... Uh, let God know we think He's doing a good job or let the preacher know we think He's doing a good job. No, 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 no. That's not the purpose of it. It is simply, it is simply you recognizing that God who provided all for you and your abilities is greater than yourself. And so there's an act of trust here and there's an act of obedience that takes place here. And we're not really comfortable with talking about this. And I'm not real comfortable standing up here talking to you about it. Okay? Because, in all honesty, this is an area for a long time in my life I struggled. I struggled. How can I live and do what I do and have the stuff I do and still give 10%? I mean, God, that's a lot of money. And, and I mean, so, so I've had that wrestle too. Now... So how was the tithe used? How was it used? 
You see this in your outline. I have four things down for you. Number one, the tithe was used to provide income for the priests. Okay? The reason the priests needed the income is because the priests had given their lives, and God had set it up this way, had given their lives to serving God. So the priests were going to be doing all the religious duties and all the things that took place around the temple and, with all, and dealing with all of the people, all of Israel or all of the church. That's what they were doing. And so for them to be able to commit their time to doing that, then God ordered the other tribes to give a tenth, to give a tithe in order to take care of the needs of the priests. That's one, for their provision. And their ministry, their, their acts of service to God was their work and still is their work. That's how, that's how that works. So that was one of the areas. Another way the tithe was used, it was used to care for the poor. By giving the tithe to the temple, then the priests in turn could use the tithe to care for the poor. It was also used to care for the orphans and widows to be able to make provision for them. And then it was also used to take care of the temple or the tabernacle, simply meaning the structure. We don't sit here today in this building with a roof over our head because it was free and someone gave it to us. And, and, and we, don't, we don't get free electric and we don't get free water just because we're a church. I mean, we have bills to pay just to take care of a structure. And they had to take care of a structure back then as well. And so a part of the tithe was used to take care of the structure. And there are other, there are other ways the tithe was used. I just wanted to highlight those four. You can, you can search this out and look it up on your own if you desire to dig into that. Other ways that the tithe was used. But those are certainly four of the ways they were used. All right. Now that we're there, now we deal with the text. And before we deal with the text... I don't know if you know this or not. Uh, years ago, my mom was robbed at gunpoint. When I worked in a bakery, I got a job in a bakery mopping floors at 15 years old. And as I was mopping the floors, I would see no one would be back in the back of the bakery. And so I'd have this big scrubber and I'm just going over the bakery floor. And I just happened to walk by this gigantic bowl of icing that was covered, you know, and I figured out how to uncover that baby and, um, and make it look like no one had been there. And I'd, I'd take a little spatula. I'd take... I mean, there's nothing like it. You know, you know, when you get that little slice of cake and there's just that little bit of icing on it? I had the whole bowl. And, and, and I mean, the whole bowl was about this tall and about this wide. And, and sometimes I'd go home sick from, from work uh, or lack of work. And... Uh, and so, so anyway, I started there at 15, and when I, when I started there, I weighed 142 pounds. And the reason I'm so exact on 142 pounds is in high school back at Virginia Beach, I was on the wrestling team, and I wrestled in the weight class 142 to 148, and I was in the lowest of the class, 142. That was my weight, 15 years old, 142. You know, as I was there over time after mopping floors, they started entrusting me other jobs, and I ended up actually doing a lot of stuff. I made all the pies, all the desserts for every airplane that flew out of Norfolk International Airport, did all that kind of stuff. Wow, big deal, but that's what I did, and, uh, and, and then I started cutting donuts. And let me tell you what, these donuts we have back here, they're good. But there's nothing like a hot donut right out of the grease. And, out of, and so, so I'd cut those donuts and I'd lay them out on the screen and then take the donut holes and lay all those out on a big screen. And I'd fry them up, fry them up and I'd flip them with those little wooden sticks. And when, when they get done, I'd dump them in the glaze. And then I'd roll them around with my hands and I'd put them out on the tray. And then I'd put them on the shelf, but I'd put them on the shelf and then I'd take one. And then, and, and because, you know... You know I, I, would, I'd ate, I ate everything I made. They told me one time I'd get sick of sweets after I worked there long enough, and I'm still not sick of sweets. And, uh, and, so, and, and then those donut holes, they, you just make this massive pile of them on a tray. Oh, my gosh. There's nothing like them. So when I would go to work early in the morning, I'd always have some milk with me, and I'd cook those things up, and I'd eat a bunch of them. Remember, I was 15 years old, I was 142. When I left after I graduated high school and I went away to Asbury to college, uh, when I left there, my last time working was the end of July, uh, I was 235 pounds. Uh, really, that did happen. I didn't wrestle anymore. Uh, 
and, uh, and, and I looked like a donut hole. That's pretty much, uh, it's pretty much me. That's, that's how it happened. Well, I got my mother. The reason I'm telling you all this, why are you telling us this story? Um, the reason I'm telling you all this is because when, when you worked at the bakery, and I got my mom a job at the bakery because now her kids are basically all able to take care of themselves, and she had always been a stay-at-home mom, and she wanted to start working. I got her a job at the bakery, and so she was a sales lady, and, and when she started there, she worked out in the front uh, filling orders for people as they came in the store in the evening. So all the bakers would be gone, and when the bakers would leave, when we would leave, we'd walk out the back door, and we, the back door would be locked, and we'd make sure it was closed. Well, someone left, uh, uh, and when someone left, uh, the door didn't close all the way. My mom is there. It's dark outside. It's about 8 o'clock in the evening. The bakery closes at 9 o'clock, and at 8 o'clock in the evening, someone comes through the swinging door that leads from the oven area and the prep area out into the sales area. And the guy has a mask over his head, and he's got a gun, and he's pointing it at my mom. She's the only one there. And he orders her to give, give him everything in the cash register. Give me all the money. My mom, my mom, she looks at that boy, and she says, What would your mother think of you? Now, mom's telling me this after the fact, of course. And I'm saying, what? Did you give him the money? Did he leave? No, I didn't give him the money. I looked at him and I shamed him. If your mother knew what you were doing right now, she'd be so ashamed of you. I said, well, what did he do? She said he dropped the gun and he turned and he ran out the back door. I said, mom. Don't do that. Don't do that the next time. Yeah, my mom was robbed at gunpoint. The reason I tell you that is because when we look at this text in Malachi, God is saying through the prophet Malachi that in essence, when we do not tithe and recognize God as the greater, we rob God. And the word for rob here the word for rob here means to mug, to pistol whip. It's not a, hey, stick them up. It's an, it's an active, active, intentional effort to take from God, to harm God. And so, looking in your bulletin, you see failure to tithe is equal to robbing God. And in verse 8, there's Malachi, through, as God is speaking through him, he sets up this little conversation that's taking place between, between Israel and God. All right? And so, so, will a man rob God? That's what God is asking. Will a man rob God? And if you and I hear that question, can anyone rob God? We would say, no, that's impossible. Who can rob God? I mean, he owns everything. It's all his. Who can really rob God? That's an impossible thing. And yes, it is impossible. So, will a man rob God? And by the way, you can jot that down. The word rob means to mug or to take by force. Number two there you see, the response that God has, will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. So what God is saying is, can a man rob God? And you go, no, that's impossible. Yet you guys have figured out a way to make the impossible look like it's possible. Yet you're robbing me. Even though you can't rob me, you're doing it. You figured it out. And so when, when they heard that, they respond like we respond. With a, they ask this simple question, how have we robbed you? How have we robbed you? Which, which means when God says, hey, can a man rob God, yet you all are robbing me? They're going, who? Me? Oh, no, 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 no. God, I, I don't intend to rob you. I have no intention of taking away from you. Not me. I mean, how would we be robbing you? How would we rob you? And then he answers, in your tithes and offerings. You're withholding. You're withholding from me those things I have commanded of you. Now, it's a big deal. I know this is uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable for me. But this is what he's saying. 
you look on down. Failure to tithe brought a curse on the entire nation. Failure to tithe brought a curse on the entire nation. Now follow me here. The entire nation, Israel, they were going through a time where they, there was a lot of starvation, a lot of hunger. Why? Because the crops weren't producing. The crops weren't producing. Why weren't the crops producing? Because God, since they were robbing Him, God was withholding His blessing to them. So their crops didn't produce. The vines, the fruit of the vine, would, would rot on the vine before they, could, before they could use it or dry up on the vine. The crops of the land would wither and not produce. And so there was a lot of starvation. There was a lot of hunger among Israel. And he's saying that. You guys are cursed because you don't tithe. That's what he's saying here. Now... What God does here, it would be one thing if he left it right here. It would be one thing if he left it right here. But instead of leaving it here, he provides a remedy. And the remedy is kind of interesting to me. Of course, this is what I love about God. When he points out sin in our life, he, he doesn't just point out sin in our life. He provides the remedy for our sin. Now, that's huge. I love it when, I mean, I hate it when God points, points out the sin in my life, but I love it when God points out the way to get past that sin controlling my life. That's the remedy. And here he gives the remedy. And this is where he, he does that thing where he invites you and he invites me to test him, to put him to the test. Now, I, I want to I read that verse, okay, in verse 10. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house test me in this says the Lord Almighty now look and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room to store it now when we look at this verse when we look leave that verse up there for me if you don't mind when we look at this verse when we come to this verse, there's a fine line that sits here. Now, this is important. I say this. It's important you understand this. There's a line that divides what we call the prosperity doctrine and simply blessings from God, okay? Because you can take this verse that you're looking at, and many have, and, and I, I remember a book I read years and years and years and years ago while, while I was just out of college. And, um, and the, the book was entitled Seed Faith Giving. And using this verse, the principle was simply this. If you want God to financially bless you, then you give to Him. And whatever you give to Him, He will multiply and give back to you. Now, there's a problem with that. Because it doesn't work. Now you're going to have to follow me here for a second because there's this line where God says, test me in this. Be obedient in what you're doing. Be obedient in the tithe and see if I just won't flood you with blessings. Well, I believe that. I have tested God in this. I didn't realize I was testing God in this. But I have tested God in this, and I can tell you, I can stand, as Scott stood here last week and gave testimony, I can stand here and give testimony and tell you that as a result of, of faithfully tithing, as Cindy and I faithfully tithe together, that we have been enormously blessed, and we have seen enormous blessings. Everybody with me so far? But i got to tell you something. Our bank account didn't get bigger as a result. But we have been more than blessed. So God invites us to test. And I don't want you to walk out of here and go, okay. Now Rick was saying, well Rick wasn't saying. Let me tell you what I am not saying. 
I am not saying what this little book I read years and years and years ago said, that if you, if you dump a thousand bucks to Christ Community Church and, and uh, you, you give us a thousand bucks, that God is going to take that, shake it down, press it together, run it over, and He's going to multiply blessings to you, and you're going to get two thousand bucks. Well, you know what? That makes God a pretty good investment firm. And so a lot of people, a lot of people over the years have given money to different things with the the full intention and promise of other people saying you're going to get back even more money. Well, I, I don't believe that. It certainly hasn't happened in my life. And you'll go, well, yeah, it hadn't happened in your life because you don't believe it. No, I've been faithful in testing God. I've been faithful in tithing. And I, can, I will continue to be faithful in tithing. That will happen. And God will continue to bless. And that's how we're going to close the sermon in here in just a little bit. Those blessings. Just hang with me. But I just want to make it clear that there's this fine line here. And I don't, I don't want to cross over it. God blesses. Does he bless some people with finances? Yes. Absolutely he does. Does he bless other people with different kinds of blessings? Yes, absolutely he does. Test him and see if he won't just bless your socks off. Bless your socks off. Uh, I don't know where that came from. Uh, see, if he won't, see if he won't bless you in just being obedient to that. Okay, everybody with me so far? Will somebody say amen? Thank you, God. See, when, i got to beg for amens, and I knew, I'd, I knew I'd have to. Okay, he invites us to test him. Now, obedience to God by tithing results in blessing beyond what you could imagine. Beyond anything you could imagine. Obedience in tithing results in a blessing. Okay? And you see that in verses 10 and 11, this is what he says to Israel. Remember, their struggle is that there's a lot of starvation because their crops aren't producing. And so he tells them to to test them and all of that. Then look at verse 11. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops. That's a blessing. And the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before they're ripe, says the Lord Almighty. And then all the nations, as a result, will call you blessed. Because once you were starving, but now that you're being obedient, I've poured out my blessing, and all the things that would keep you from starving are now producing fruit in order so that you can be provided for. That's huge. That's a blessing. Now, there's, I've got, I'm going to share this just real quick. Um, There's this thing out, speaking of testing God. There's this thing that's been kind of going around different churches. Uh, I, I, don't, I honestly don't know of any in the area, local area. But it's called the 90-Day Tithe Challenge. I know some pastors who have done this. The 90-Day Tithe Challenge. And I'm just going to read you verbatim. Here it is. The 90-Day Tithe Challenge that churches offer to their folks. For many... Here it is. For many, the idea of bringing the first 10% of our income to the church seems overwhelming. The thing is, it doesn't matter how much or how little we make, God promises to pour out blessings on us when we tithe. Tithing is about training our heart to trust God at His Word. And I read that and I go, yeah, sure. I, I get that. I understand that and I believe that. Countless people experience God's blessings when they tithe, but often the first step is the hardest one to take. That's why we created the 90-Day Tithe Challenge. If you are not presently tithing, giving the first 10% of your income, and are willing to make the commitment to take the 90-Day Tithe Challenge, you are going to get a guarantee from this church. We commit to you that if you tithe for 90 days and God doesn't hold true to His promises of blessings, we will refund 100% of your tithe. Now, when I, when, I read, when I read that, when I first heard about this, I went, really? That seems a little bit coercive. Tithe so that you can get back. And listen, if you don't get back, if you don't get any blessings, you just come and tell us, we'll cut you a check, give you your money back. Well, that's not the reason we're to tithe. We're to tithe because we, the lesser, are in the presence of the greater 
who owns everything, who has allowed us to have 90% of everything he's given us, but said, I want the tithe because I need the tithe to use the tithe so that my work can be done. What do you mean, God? You can't do it on your own. You can't do it without the money. Oh, yeah, I can do anything I want to do. I'm giving you the opportunity to partner with me and be a part of this together. What a blessing that God would even consider any of us worthy to partner with and, and Him use us for His kingdom's sake. As broken as we all are. Well, you might not be broken, but so this guy is, okay? All right. Let me get to the blessings. I started thinking while I was, while I was studying this text, I started thinking through... The blessings of the tithe. I just want to share this with you. I started writing. I had to quit writing. Because I, this would have gone, gone on forever. Blessings of the tithe. They're, they're on fall retreat with the students right now. But Patrick and Eddie. How many of you know Patrick and Eddie? Raise your, those of you who don't know Patrick and Eddie, they're the two young men from Uganda who are generally here every weekend. And, and the reason that they're here from Uganda, they're not here to get a Bible degree. But for two years, Kentucky Christian has allowed them to come to the campus, not to receive a degree, but to take specific classes that teach them about ministry and about the Bible. Why? Why? So that in two years, well, the first year is almost up. Another year, they're going to head back to Uganda, and they are going to be given a bicycle, and they're going to be given Bibles, and they are going to uh, learn a trade while they're here so that they can work with their hands and make money and provide. And they're going to go to a village that doesn't have a church in the village, and they are going to move into that village, and they are going to work with their hands in that village, and they're going to get to know the people in that village, and they're going to plant a church in that village, and they're going to proclaim Jesus to that village. That's what they're here for. And the reason they're able able to be here partly is because of the tithe. That's part of what it goes to. There are some individuals who help them individually, but a part of what Christ community does is to help take care of those two young men. Why? Because you know what? When all this is over and we're all up in heaven, who knows what Ugandan will walk up to you and say, hey, thank you for your forgiving. Thank you for doing what you did because what you did trained Pat, Patrick and Eddie who then came and told me about Jesus so that I could know him and now I'm here. That's a blessing. Right now, they're on their way home, students from the fall retreat. Our students, Many of our students were able to go to the fall retreat because of the tithe because there are students who couldn't afford to go. And they're able to go and, and, and Andrew is there with them. They may be, oh, they're coming in now. Oh, boy. Um, wait, go back to the retreat, dude. Um, there, <laughs> oh, he waved and took off and started running back. <laughs> anyway, uh, they've, they've learned about the love of Christ. They've learned about growing in their relationship with Christ. They've learned about being able to love each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. How are they able to do that? Part of that's the tithe. That's a blessing. Right now, while you're sitting in here, the reason why there's not a bunch of kids in here is because they're back in promised land. The reason they can be in promised land is because the tithe is used to do, purchase materials and to do other things that help promised land work. That's part of the tithe. That's a blessing. We were able to, we were able to help the local homeless shelter. You know, we talked about the canned food, but long before the canned food, the local homeless shelter was, uh, was going to have to close its doors. And so we, as a congregation, that's when we started collecting a dollar. And we hadn't done that before. We started asking people a dollar for the homeless as you left. The reason why is every month we gave them a check for 1500 bucks, And the reason we gave it to them was so that they could keep their doors open and continue to do the ministry the homeless shelter does. That's what we did. That's a blessing. The homeless shelter is a blessing. And the result, that's a result of your tithe. Um, we have weatherized, roofed, uh, built wheelchair ramps for homes and, and uh, people in poverty and elderly people both locally and, and nationally. And part of that has been, a, has been done not just because of, uh, partly because of the tithe, but certainly because of the money that was raised by students to be able to go and purchase all of those building materials. That's a blessing of the tithe. It's a blessing. Of, I, told, I told the gang last night, just locally, we are, we are close to 2,000 homes locally that have been worked on through the work camps just in our area. So when people say, man, you guys don't do anything around here. Yeah, we do a whole bunch around here. 
There's a lot of the stuff we do around here. We don't go tooting horns and things like that. But that's, that's what's been going on. And Bill Raisin's one of the guys who really drives that and makes that happen. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe in uh, not this coming summer, but the following, there's going to be another work camp in this area. We're going to be hammering homes again, which is great. Uh, we have in Haiti, we've, we've drilled a deep bore uh, water well, we've built a church, and we've, we've built a feeding center through, through the tithe. In Uganda, we've, we've drilled multiple wells. We have the baby rescue mission. We've trained hundreds of pastors, and Scott and Alice K continue to go over there. They will go back in May and train a bunch more pastors. That's in Uganda. How can that happen? Because of the tithe. Gassan Thomas was here a year ago. And you know the Syrian refugee crisis, that's a big deal in our community. I mean, in, in the United States, all about the Syrian refugees coming in, things like that. Gassan Thomas is the guy who goes, well, I'm not going to wait till they come to America to tell them about Jesus. He goes to their refugee camps over, over in Iraq. Uh, he, goes, he goes to Turkey, and he, and he goes to Iran, and he shares the gospel of Jesus Christ with those people who are coming out of the Muslim influence, and he is pouring into them the love of Christ. How is Gassan able to do that? Partly because of the tithe from Christ Community Church. There's Mike and Elaine Peters, who you haven't seen in quite a while, and some of you don't even know them, but they're a, they're a young couple. Well, they're, they're in their 30s, young couple still. Um, they're a young couple, and um, the, the last time they were back here, they were here because Elaine was pregnant. She had her baby here. Well, you know, she went and got pregnant again. Must be that Chinese water. And, and she, she went and got pregnant again, but they're not coming back to the States this time. They are so ingrained in what they're doing with the underground illegal church in China that they're going to have their baby there and continue to do their work. That's Mike and Elaine. How can they do that? Partly because of the tithe from Christ Community Church and partly because of the generosity of individual donors. Um, dozens of local people that have been helped, dozens upon dozens upon dozens of local people have been helped with rent, gas, or food. Hundreds of children uh, will be able to open Christmas gifts this Christmas because of your generosity in purchasing gifts uh, for Angel Tree. And again, part of that will come from the tithe. Uh, our facilities, the fact that you're sitting here in that chair, whether it's blue or tan, uh, that, that it's comfortable on your hind end, that the weather's comfortable, that you have light, you have sound, you don't have the weather coming in on you, that's a blessing. This building is a blessing, and that's why we've got to take care of it. That's why we, we pour into it. That's why you do what you do, because this building is a blessing from God, to be sure. How about our staff, Blake, Chris, Paula, Ralph, Andrew, Matt, Scott, myself, serving, leading, teaching, praying, visiting, encouraging, using our gifts to do what we do. That's a part of the tithe. That's how we're taken care of. And as Scott said last week, if all of a sudden the tithe at Christ Community Church doubled, if everybody started giving 10%, we're not taking pay raises. It's not about that. We're, we're cared for. It's not about that. But it opens up avenues to do more for the cause of the kingdom of Christ. New Beginnings, our tithe has helped the, the, the drug addicts at New Beginnings as they go through their recovery process. And one of the coolest things happened this week. Uh, Cindy and I were uh, in Ashland and we were getting some stuff for the Christmas decorations that we'd be putting up here. And, um, and we went to Chick-fil-A to eat. And, and yeah, Chick-fil-A, I, I kind of thought, I was trying to rationalize my tithe. Does dinner at Chick-fil-A count as tithe since it's a Christian outfit? Um, <laughs> Uh, I wanted it to, but it doesn't. So, so we ate our uh, we ate our chicken sandwich, and we ate it. Our, ate it. We ate our double fried French fries because they're not really good if they're not double fried. And, and anyhow, we did that. And as we were walking out, there's a young man sitting right by the door. And as I'm getting ready to walk through the door, he goes, "Do you remember me? Hey, Rick, do you remember me?" And I'm looking at him, going, no, "I'm so sorry, I don't. I, I'm so sorry." And, and he, sh he shook my hand, and I said, what's your name? And he said, my name's Nathan. And, and I said, Nathan, he said, I was in New Beginnings. And I just want you to know that you come and teach in Bible study and all the stuff that goes on there really was a blessing to me. And I'm going to tell you what. There's, there's people you can look at and go, they have a history. They have a history with drugs. They're struggling with drugs or whatever. This guy was so clean cut, got a job. Response. I was just so cool. We walked out of that building and go, God, thank you so much for that. That's a part of the blessing. 
That's a blessing. Um, there's the Haley House down on 14th Street um, where prisoners come as they're getting out of prison. And, and uh, Clarence Parker and, and Pleasant Green Church opened up the Haley House so that they can take those guys in and get them reacclimated into society and teach them about the love of Christ. There's Cradle. And again, I could go on and on because this list would be endless. You want to talk about blessings. Christ Community Church, this is what I'm stopping with. This is our lesson. Test God. If you have not been a person who tithed, I'm not here to shame you. I'm not here to guilt you. I'm not here to coerce you. I'm not here to do anything but teach the word and say this. Test him. He invites you to. And when you test him, you just open up those eyeballs and you watch what he does with what you tested him with. He will pour out his blessing. Not because we deserve it. It's because he said he would. And he's going to keep his promise. Amen? Let's bow our heads together. Father, I thank you so much for this morning. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the challenge of your word. And although anytime you get to talking about our pocketbooks, Lord, it gets uncomfortable. But Father, I pray you help each of us, myself included, to recognize you as the greater. And that everything I have for you, everything I have worked for, everything I have saved, all of that stuff, all my investments, that's, a, that's just from you. And you've entrusted me to be a manager of it. Help me to be responsible. Help us to be responsible managers. And help us to recognize you with the tithe. God, we love you and we look forward to all the blessings you are going to pour out on us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Christ community, as you go, go and let's turn this world, this community we live in upside down for Jesus Christ. All right, we'll see you later. Christ community meets on Saturday at 5 p.m. and Sunday at 1030 a.m. For more information, visit www.christcommunity.net or check out our Facebook page.